Hello and welcome to All About A-League, the show that's all about A-League, Socceroos and everything to do with the world game in Australia. My name is Gabriel D'Angelo and with me to talk about all things A-League is 3ZZZ broadcaster Bern Merkel. Hello Bern. Hello Gabriel. And journalist from Neos Cosmos, Alex Inefantis. Hello Alex. Good evening Gabriel. And today on the program we have a very special guest with us, Melbourne Victory defender Georg Niedermeyer. Hello Georg, thanks for being on the program. Thank you Gabriel. Before we go back to the boys on the couch, let's go over the results for the last round of the home and away season. Round 27 started on Anzac Day with Adelaide United defeating Brisbane in a 5-3 shootout. Melbourne City easily smashed Central Coast 5-0, Newcastle surpassed Sydney FC 2-0, Melbourne Victory defeated Western Sydney 1-0 and Perth Glory were far too good for Wellington 5-0. Now over to the ladder and nothing has changed at all during the last couple of weeks where Perth Glory remain on top with Sydney FC in second, Melbourne Victory, Adelaide United, Melbourne City and Wellington Phoenix making up the top six. While Newcastle, Western Sydney, Brisbane Raw and Central Coast make up the bottom of the ladder as they have done for the most part of the season. Burned, starting with you, which game for you was match of the round? I think there were a lot of goals, a lot of also unexpected results. But if you have a 5-3 as it happened on Anzac Day, I think that that's a must for the match of the round. Especially with uh, Brisbane Raw being 3-2 up and then Adelaide comes back. And uh, that penalty from Bordiak was <laughs> also, I think, really a big highlight. So um, for me, definitely the match of the round. Um, a bit disappointing for Matt McKay in his last match. Um, I, I would have wished him a, a final goal as well. Um, but for Adelaide now, they have the home match and I think that will be exciting as well. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. The Anzac Day game was uh, definitely one to remember because we saw Brisbane put up more of a fight than Adelaide would have expected after they took the lead. They went into the uh, dressing rooms with the advantage, but then in the second half we saw Adelaide come out and score four goals with four different scorers, which just goes to show how much of a, of a uh, team effort they have, uh, how much of a tight group they are, and uh, that's, uh, that's an advantage for them heading into the playoffs. And we couldn't go on without a quick mention about the appointment of Liverpool legend Robbie Fowler as the new manager of Brisbane Raw. Alex, is his appointment the right one for Brisbane? I think I'm going to hold off uh, on my judgment for a little bit until <laughs> uh, we see what uh, happens because uh, I feel uh, that he's a little bit lacking in experience because all, he's, uh, all we've seen from him is uh, his uh, experience in training the, uh, the Liverpool uh, Academy. Far, uh, apart from that, he doesn't have much else when it comes to training professional clubs. So we might have to wait a little bit. Yeah, I agree in terms of he has no experience or not that big experience, but uh, on the other hand, I mean, he is a big name. So, and especially for Brisbane after that long season uh, and, and not so good season, it's good that they get now some, some positive attendance. Of course, it can turn around very quickly. I think if you see what happened with Western Sydney Wanderers this season, Marcus Bubble was a big name as well. Sure. And I think it was a quite disappointing season. So a, a good name doesn't always provide a good coaching. So um, I think it's um, also, um, he has um, Tony Grant as an assistant coach with a lot of people um, might underestimate that. So a few people in the background that uh, might support him as well. And having that Liverpool background, he might also then attract a few more players, good players as well. Yeah, no, exactly right. Well, hopefully he can uh, turn things around for Brisbane. As I mentioned earlier on the program, we have a very special guest with us, Melbourne Victory defender Georg Niedermeyer. Georg, thank you for joining us. Thanks for the invitation. I just wanted to start off with a question about your early days. You started your junior career at Bayern Munich. Uh, being at a club of that sort of prestige like Bayern Munich as a young player, how did it shape you to become the player that you are today? Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's one thing I think you, you learn pretty early in the youth when you, when you play at Bayern Munich, and that's winning. So uh, it's everywhere you, you drive, um, you are the, the favourite, so every team wants to beat you and I think it's pretty similar with, with Melbourne Victory, so um, the boys told me Victory is by Munich of Australia. Um, and <laughs> I, well. I can, <laughs> That's one way to Of Australia. Yeah, so, Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I can understand it because everywhere we, ro we, we rock up, the people, um, yeah, they want to see us lose and, and that's what I learned at Bayern Munich to handle this and to yeah to try to win every every game every trainings match every competition. 
So we're now heading into the um, yeah, elimination finals and um, it was your first season now not playing in, in Germany. Um, Mathieu Delpierre played for Melbourne Victory for two years and um, he was quite involved I think for, for you yeah. um, coming to Melbourne. If you now have a little bit of a summary, was the season what you expected um, and also did you have much contact with Matt, Mathieu during the season? So throughout the season we, we didn't have too much con contact. We, yeah. we texted a couple of times but um, like just about our squad and his his experience and now I, s I asked him because he came last year I think for for Christmas if he would come again but uh, this year I think he was in France uh, with his wife's family so different setup um, but throughout the season uh, yeah I was busy and made my own experience which is uh, very different to, to a European season so um, just with the finals coming up in the end, the end of the season was a bit, okay, you were fighting for your position, but uh, it's another tension if you play in the Bundesliga for relegation for the different spots, uh, Europe League, Champions League. Um, I mean, every position brings you a lot of more money for the next season, so the clubs have a big interest in, in, in each position. Then. Um, it's important for the fans as well. So there was a, a, a big difference, especially in the end. The January phase was interesting as well. So many games in uh, playing in January. So yeah, there were many differences and uh, I haven't uh, judged yet uh, pros and cons because it's still going on and we have something to win and it's not, not less. So George, uh, as Gabriel stated earlier, you started your career by Munich. So can you take us through the daily life of what it's like for a young player to start his career at such a world-class club? Uh, yeah, I started pretty young at Bayern Munich, um, uh, I think age of nine. Mm -hmm. So uh, in those days it was yeah like two no three times training already, mm -hmm. but more in the in in the evenings at, at right. night. But uh, it got more and more uh, yeah, advanced, and the players I started with, nobody yeah. made it till the end. So mm -hmm. every year we had a big uh, fluctuation. Players left, came and left, and um, that was pretty rough, I, w I would say, because you saw your friends coming, and it was mm -hmm. real, really, you spent a lot of time with them. And after one season, they were gone, although they were good good kick good good soccer players wow. but uh, yeah. others coming in so you learned pretty early to um, to fight for your mm. for your sports for your and also that you're yeah replaceable and yeah it took a lot of effort to to get through through these stages and um, yeah it's it's nice to see that some of the players made it made it as well and it's always nice to see um, yeah familiar faces in the Bundesliga or somewhere in the world <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to pause for now, but we'll be back to talk more with Georg Niedermeyer after the break. Don't go anywhere, you're watching All About A-League. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half of the show, you're watching All About A-League. And we are talking with our special guest, Melbourne Victory defender Georg Niedermeyer. Georg, I just want to ask you about football in Germany. In the mid-2000s, Germany completely restructured their entire footballing program from start to end. Um, during that time, as a player playing in Germany, what were the changes that you had noticed during the whole footballing structure during that period? And do you also believe that Australia could be capable to do those sorts of changes like what Germany had done? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. Um, uh, Australia could or maybe should follow follow Germany in, in that case because um, yeah we we were doing pretty bad as a as a national team in in that phase we were successful but you you could see in the way we were playing we were setting up it was not uh, not attractive anymore and the players got older and older so we had to rethink how we um, how we get a good competition and in that phase I was um, playing for the for the second team of Bayern Munich and uh, we we had to make the qualification for the for the new built uh, third division because before there were separate leagues and um, so we set up a third 
national division, which was uh, or which still is a very very good and uh, tough competition. There are many traditional clubs in at the moment, and it's a um, it's a yeah I say for for second teams or for for youth teams. Um, there are no youth teams, but for second teams under 23. Um, to get in there and, and play on that level, that's an awesome challenge if you can achieve that, but also as a step for professional football, it's a, it's a very good good decision. Comparing with Germany, then, I mean, you just came to, to Melbourne um, for a season and we just talked about Robbie Fowler as well as an international coach coming now to Brisbane. What do you think n needs to change or is it already under way that international players not in their late 30s come to, to Australia and can boost the game um, so to make it more popular because I mean in Germany it's probably like yeah Australia is so far away it's a little tiny league with 10 teams so, so how can the A-League attract more, more players? <sighs> You know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> like we are, once you reach the level, um, you always you always have in your mind like you want to get paid for it as yeah. well. So, uh, so the, sal salary the salary cap, cap is yeah. a is a big big issue, I think to to attract not only marquee players yeah. but but to raise the the standard in in or the depth in the in the squad because yeah. um, besides those 11 players um, there is a big gap afterwards yeah. and i think with an increase of the salary cap um, you could lift the standard um, and and this gap would wouldn't been wouldn't be so so big so yeah definitely The salary cap is a limiting factor. So I was in talks with a with a mate of me playing in the second Bundesliga in Germany, and I was telling him I'm thinking of going to going to Australia, and I I was sure like uh, I knew what you can what you can earn here. So we can speak honest. Um, it's not the world when you play in Europe on 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 that level, and you always think, okay, uh, I have 10 years of playing soccer and. Uh, afterwards, I want to be set up. I maybe have a family. I have expenses. Um, so you you calculate your next step, and and once you want to go to Australia in the middle of your career, um, yeah, everything it's has some to risk. everything yeah. has to fit. You know, yeah. it's not only like the sport, uh, the sports side. Of course, you you also think of your family and and your life um, life after. So. He he could he couldn't make it, so he's playing now in the third division in in Germany. So uh, Jorg, you were playing uh, in the previous season yep. in the Bundesliga, and then you came to Australia, so uh, to to play for victory. And so, how was that difference playing uh, in Germany and then switching to to Australian football, switching to the A League? Did you feel uh, in the in that transition? Did you feel uh, a difference in the quality of football? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, especially as I said, just to go mm -hmm. the, the depth in the team, um, it, you have a big variety of of skill level as well. So yeah, um, yeah when you when you do an exercise in, in training, you can you can see the level. I mean, Casco Honda, you can't compare him to a young Australian kid. Um, but yeah, I, I think if you play in Bundesliga, you have every position. You have two um, yeah. two players who can. Who, who fight for the spot and who are barely mm -hmm. or pretty much on one level, and uh, that was a was a big difference. And uh, I had to get used to it because also it's a it's a different game. Yeah, that's true. Back in 2009, the then Socceroos coach Pim Verbeek yeah. said that the standard of the A League was like that of a training session for a fourth division German side. Um, As a player, as someone who's played in Germany and now in Australia, where do you see the standard of the A League in comparison to Germany? Uh, it's it's very hard to compare it because um, you have those uh, exceptional players, like marquee players, um, players who had a had a big career or still could play on a certain level uh, overseas, somewhere in Asia, and um, then you have the. I, I say the Australian standard, which is just a different one um, compared to this. So it's hard to to put one one team uh, in a German 
German league system. Uh, maybe it's bottom second division, third division. I think third division would be like if you look at the season, that's where where I see both technically and physically. Or um, be so in terms of yeah, like like it looks like that. It's a very intense game. So um, when you come to talking about fitness and how often you train, is that at least something where the, the gap is a bit? Smaller rather than technical from a technical perspective if that makes sense So um, how, how intense is, is the game itself here in Australia? Uh, it's pretty intense. I think because it's um, It's connected or re related to to the rugby history and uh, yeah foot football mm -hmm. uh, Where many contests happen and it's yeah, you The f I'm watching a game, the first ball always goes straight up in the air forward <laughs> into a contest and I'm wondering like, okay boys, uh, we could keep the ball, but I think <laughs> yes, that's, uh, a, that's a thing here. And so less technical, more physical. Yeah, it is definitely yeah. physical, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there we can, we can compete and you, you see, for example, in our last Champions League game, what is possible if you just uh, concentrate on good defending and then it's hard to, to win against the side of us but the game to, to make it more um, to, to build our game we have to improve with the ball with our standard and therefore you need uh, not only the physical side and defending you want to attack as well and not only on counter attack so you want to be a side which um, dominates the pitch. So, George, I really want to ask this question. Uh, sure. From your career, uh, who was the toughest uh, opponent you've had to <laughs> face? I remember a game back in 2010 in the Camp Nou where you faced uh, Lionel Messi's Barcelona. So, should we put it down to him? Uh, that was an, an awesome team. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ibrahimovic. On Ibrahimovic yeah. came on. That was a face he uh, had a fight with Pep Guardiola in the end. So, <laughs> uh, at least he was keeping calm and mm. but it, w it was impressive like there was my uh, my old PlayStation idol Thierry Henry so he, sta he stood next to me and uh, a couple of times his teammates missed a pass on him but otherwise yeah, yeah I would have said okay that's it <laughs> make your goal but um, yeah Lionel no, Messi was awesome uh, Robert Lew Lewandowski when when he played for Dortmund by Munich is always difficult because the teams the level of the team is so good um, so individuals just are even harder to defend but it was impressive when he played in, in Dortmund um, but there were there were some some good names but yeah uh, the game in Camp Nou, yeah. uh, so many big names. That was uh, the highlight of your career. Uh, one highlight, I yeah. think, the cup final against Bayern Munich was so finals. Uh, always interesting and special. And uh, yeah, we had one game four four in Dortmund, which is just because of those emotions. And oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and changes in the in the scoreboard. That was impressive. Well, we can talk to Georg all day, but right now we have to take a quick break. When we return, we'll go over our tips for the first week of the finals. Don't go anywhere. You're watching All About A-League. Welcome back to All About A-League and we are now entering the all-important finals phase of the 2018-19 season. With Perth Glory, Sydney FC, Melbourne Victory, Wellington Phoenix and Melbourne City all vying for a place in the grand final a few weeks time. Perth Glory and Sydney FC will have the week off but the other four teams will face elimination finals will defeat will mean seasons over for the losing team. The first elimination final will be an interesting encounter between Melbourne Victory and Wellington Phoenix on Friday night at Amy Park at 7.50pm. Georg, I don't need to ask you about the importance of this one, but how is the team preparing for this game? How are you guys going to approach this one? Yeah, first of all, um, get your mind into the, into the right mindset. So um, we are, we're making a normal week, so we don't do anything special. I think, uh, yeah, that's the right way to to approach uh, where you want to where you want to go because you you need silence because there will be a lot of more media interest and of course it's a different pressure than playing against Western Sydney on the weekend uh, by all respect but it's an elimination final so uh, everybody knows 
what it is like and the preparation is going to be just uh, just uh, executing your routines well uh, if you ask me the, the way I see it is uh, Wellington Phoenix have had a bit of a drop in their performance in the past few weeks they've gone from fourth down to sixth they've lost two positions and on the other hand Melbourne victory we've mentioned in the past that uh, Kevin Musket sometimes he seems that he doesn't have a plan B but uh, when you have players of this quality, such as George or Ola or uh, Ola Toivonen or Keski Honda, you don't necessarily need a plan B because uh, we don't have that many players of that quality in the A-League. So I think they'll make all the difference, especially in this time of the season. Uh, that's when these players are necessary and that's when they make the difference. I mean. It would have probably been for the crowd in Melbourne would have been better to, to have a derby, right? <laughs> yeah. But um, nice. football is not a wish list. <laughs> so um, yeah, and, and I think at this stage, probably a, a few weeks ago, um, would have been a tougher game for Melbourne victory. I mean, it will be tough anyway. Yeah. But I think at this stage, Wellington dropping a bit. Um, so it might be an advantage, but uh, it will be tough anyway. So I mean, I'm going with Melbourne victory to win that one. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. I I think it's it's going to be a good match because all the three matches against Wellington mm. this season were very, very tough and, and very close. Yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't win mo uh, one match during the season, so uh, we have time now. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. Have, we <laughs> have an extra it's, motive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. On Sunday at 7 p.m., we have the second elimination final between Adelaide United and Melbourne City at Cooper Stadium. Adelaide hasn't always been so strong at home, while Melbourne City hasn't exactly set the world on fire either this season. Will Warren Joyce's boys cause an upset in the city of churches burned? Well, after that last weekend, you have the feeling um, it's getting really close. Um, uh, Adelaide, I'm really impressed and surprised since Marco Kurt's announcement that his contract is not going to be um, extended. Um, they are still now playing even better than the weeks before, in my opinion. Um, and it's it's going to be a, an exciting one, the same as on Friday. I expect an advantage for Adelaide United, but also with Melbourne City's performance last Friday, um, going to be a big one. Yeah, but uh, you need to keep in mind that Melbourne City are not that good away from home, whereas uh, we've seen Adelaide United, they've come up, uh, They've, as I said earlier, they have a lot of uh, offensive choices, five different players scored uh, on their game against Brisbane, and that's not even including Halloran or Mirka Boland or even Stamatelopoulos, who didn't even play that game. So you see they have a lot of uh, striking choices and they're a constant threat, so I think that gives them an advantage in this game. Yeah. Uh, what's your insights on, on both teams? I mean, you've played them both, so what do you think are the strengths and weaknesses of either side? Uh, so I think it's going to be a, a tough challenge for Melbourne City because uh, Adelaide at home is uh, it's not nice to, to play there. I mean, we lost two games up there. Um, they defend very well. Uh, Melbourne City, I think, um, has the, the approach to take, take the game on. And uh, especially then, Adelaide United is is pretty good on counter attacks and crosses in the box. So uh, it's going to be a very, very, very interesting game. Would you say Cooper Stadium best atmosphere apart from Amy Park in in the A League regarding the stadium? Um, yeah. So when we played there, it's full. Um, it's a pure good soccer crowd. stadium, yeah. and it was a good atmosphere. Yeah. 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 That's all for this week's edition of All About A-League. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Bern and Alex. Thank you, boys. Thanks, Thanks Gabriel. Gabriel. And a big special thank you to our special guest, Georg Niedermeyer. Thank you, Georg. We wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. I'm Gabriel D'Angelo. Thank you for watching. Hope your team wins. Bye for now. <laughs>